The LG Optimus View has been announced ahead of MWC with a very Samsung Galaxy Note-like 5-inch display but running at a much lower resolution, 1024 by 768 and in a 4-3 aspect ratio, so the device is rather wide. <laughs> There's a 1.5 GHz dual-core Qualcomm processor, 8 megapixel camera and it supports LTE. There's no memory expansion but you do get 32 gig of storage. Like the Note, there's apparently stylus support. Wow, we really are going full circle from the stylus-driven phones of the turn of the century. The Optimus View launches with Android 2.3 but ICS is an update by the summer. This is an exciting moment for me. My perfect smartphone has finally been made. This is the Google Nexus X. It only comes in black. It's the ultimate ninja smartphone. Notice the way the black highlights nestle in the black surroundings with black trim and black buttons. Any blacker and it would get sucked into its own gravity well. Superficially, it resembles the older Nexus S, but the screen stretched slightly to 720p resolution in a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display, Gorilla Glass of course, plus the main body is all plastic and ruggedized to the same degree as the Motorola Defy Plus, so water, dust and shock resistance. And RF performance should be good too. It's all plastic, no metal to get in the way. Inside there's a 1.5 GHz dual core processor, 1 GB of RAM, 16 GB of mass memory and micro SD expansion. And it's Android 4.2, the brand new version. Google has finally listened to me and implemented dark themes in most of its apps, apart from the web browser, of course. So there should be substantially better battery life, helped also by a whopping 2000 milliamp hour replaceable battery in the back. Also on the back is uh, the Samsung Galaxy S2 class, eight megapixel camera with Xenon flash, yes, and LED for 720p video lighting and torch functions. And there's a really loud speaker. At last, my dreams have come true and okay, 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 it's a fair cop. This is all in my imagination. This is in fact the Nexus S, despite the made up box, but I wanted to highlight what could be made. I see a lot of fan made phone renders and made up specs, but they often seem completely outlandish and over ambitious. In this, the Nexus X, <laughs> there's no reason whatsoever why it couldn't be made today. Yes, with what I've put up here in terms of specs, it would be up in iPhone 4S or Galaxy Nexus, price territory, but if all this could be achieved, then I don't see why it wouldn't sell by the bucket load and why many of us wouldn't have to think about a new phone for years. Would you buy the Nexus X? And Google, if you decide to make this, I'll even waive my design consultancy fees. Just this once. What we have here on my beloved N8 and on the E6 hopefully shortly, uh, it's a whole new OS for the gadget filled Symbian smartphones of the last year and a half. Yes, it's still Symbian, but don't switch off, don't fast forward. There is more here than just a coat of new paint. What this means is you can take a piece of Symbian powered hardware from 2010 or 2011, now at bargain prices. My beloved N8 with the mega camera here is now less than £200 all in, brand new if you shop around. Same for the laptop like E7 that's shooting the show and also the ultra compact E6. Apply this bell update and you've got something that's comparably slick and with a vaguely similar UI to Android. In other words, you can at last have your cake and eat it. Well, almost, that's the theory. Here's what's new in Nokia Bell. It's a longish list, so I'm going to rattle through it very fast. There's a whole new page memory management scheme. In theory, nothing will ever run out of RAM again, whatever you try and load up. The latest cute runtimes are baked in from day one. Even fuller NFC functionality on the Nokia C7 at least, which has got the necessary chip. Improvements in screen real estate are seen here with Slimmer's top status bar. Home screen widgets now come in five different sizes and Android style, you can now drag widgets from one home screen to another. Unlike Android, there's full landscape support as always on Symbian, shown here. Perhaps the most blatant UI copy from Android is this pull down notifications pane. Though it's equivalent more to Android 2.1 or so, we're not talking plugins and the dismissal of individual notifications. The application launcher is now flat like stock Android, i.e. no folders for new users to get lost in, though thankfully you can create your own if you need to. For example, games, uh, rubbish I don't need, that sort of thing. Impressively, there's an option to switch the icons to alphabetical order. Although, of course, you can toggle back to your own custom order whenever you want. The web browser has been sped up. There's now one touch access to multiple browsing windows, plus web gets text selection and copying at last. <laughs> plus assorted updates to many apps, music player, calendar and camera. 
add that lot up and you can see why we essentially have a whole new OS on our hands, at least as far as users are concerned. All the above is available for free for all the Symbian 3 generation handsets from the last year and a half. And all of which also upgrades most of these handsets in most people's estimation, at least in principle. The biggest drawback is that while Symbian has a lot of apps written for it, about uh, 10, 20, 30,000 something, it's missing a number of the most demanded ones in 2012. There's no support for Kindle ebooks, for Evernote, or for Audible, just to name but three. Apart from those, most services can at least be accessed by generic clients, for example, Gmail via the, uh, the built-in email client, uh, most services perhaps via the web browser or via a third-party application. Here's a, a third-party Dropbox client, which is really rather good. There's also CuteTube for YouTube, etc. But the overall experience and convenience is less convincing than something official if you're heavily into any of these. I've always loved the idea of doing more with less though, and I for one am relishing the new lease of life with these interesting, in terms of hardware, handsets with Bell on board, even if the missing cloud services do put some people off. Comments welcome, and if you have an old Symbian 3 handset in a drawer, break it out, update it. You'll have a blast. Okay, here we go, my exhaustive 10 minute review in detail of this £100 Symbian handset. You didn't really think I was going to waste 10 minutes of your valuable time with this, did you? I'm going to be as brief as I can, given that you've absolutely no interest in buying it. The Nokia 500 is reviewed here because it's the anti-iPhone. It's the exact opposite end of the smartphone spectrum to Apple's masterpiece. As far as it's possible to go down market without actually straying into quarter VGA feature phone territory, uh, cost-wise, you can get about five of these for one iPhone. Five. It's Symbian Anna, it's NHD resolution, capacitive touch, one gigahertz processor, full worldwide sat-nav, and the rest of Symbian's app package, an excellent five megapixel camera in good light, dual charging, good battery life, great speaker, good connectivity, but <laughs> something's got to give at this price point, of course. Here are the gotchas you need to know about. The screen's plastic, not glass, so squishy and vulnerable. Visibility's not great outdoors. There's no camera shutter button. Despite the fast processor, there's no graphics chip, meaning jerky games and glitchy video playbacks. And main RAM is used to try and compensate, so there's not much of that either. And should you wish to try capturing video? Test video on the Nokia 500. EDOF video, VGA 15 frames a second, nothing special. But hey, look at the price. On the plus side, you do get three of these colourised, rubberized back covers in every box. A colour for every occasion, perhaps. The 500 will appeal for non-geeks as my first smartphone that doesn't cost the earth. The nearest Android competition, the Samsung Galaxy Y, is completely outgunned here by the 500, in my opinion. Maybe buy it for your partner when she insists she wants a new phone plus a bit of a holiday instead of an all-singing, all-dancing iPhone 4S. As a sad old geek, I know which combination I'd rather go for, but that's another matter. This is the Nokia 500.